Okay guys, so we're gonna start on workbook page 590. We're gonna start with number one. It says, describe the relationship between the terms in the sequence, then write the next three terms in the sequence. So we wanna see what operation can we use to get from one term in the sequence to the next term. So from 13 to 26, you could do add 13, or you could do times two, because 13 plus 13 is 26, and 13 times two is 26. But we wanna see which of these operations works for the whole pattern. So if we look at the next term, 26, and we add 13, that doesn't give us 52. But if we times two to 26, that does give us 52. And then if we go from 52 to the next term, 104, times two works again. So the relationship of the sequence is to multiply by two. So we could just write times two for the relationship. Next, we wanna write the next three terms in the sequence. So we left off at 104, and we wanna follow the pattern of multiplying by two. So 104 times two would give us the next term, 208, and then we have to do that times two, which is 416, and then that times two, which gives us 832. So that's the next three terms in the sequence. Now we'll do another one like this on page 591, and we'll do number three. Describe the relationship between the terms in the sequence and write the next three terms. So we could do from six to 18, that's either add 12 or multiply by three. So let's see which one works for 18 to 54. 18 plus 12, that doesn't give us 54, so that's not gonna work. Let's try times three. 18 times three, that does equal 54. And then 54 times three, that equals 162. So the relationship for this sequence is to multiply by three. Now let's find the next three terms. So we left off at 162. So we'd have to multiply that by three to find the next term. And that's 486. Multiply that by three again, follow the same pattern. 1,458, then we need to find one more. And we get 4,374. So those are the next three terms in the sequence. Now we're gonna go back to page 590 and we're gonna look at number two. Number two says, Use words and symbols to describe the value of each term as a function of its position. Then find the value of the 15th term in the sequence. So what this is saying is it just wants us to find the function rule of the table. So remember, a function rule is an expression that represents the function table. So the top numbers in this table represent our input, which we call x, and the bottom numbers represent our output, which we call y. So to find the function rule, we want to think of an operation that we could do to the input to get us to the corresponding output. So my first input is one. If I wanna to get to an output of two, I could either add one to the input or I could times two to the input but we need to see which of those work for every input and its corresponding output. So the next input is two. If I do plus one, that's not gonna get me an output of four. So that's not gonna work. If I did times two, I do get the corresponding output of four. Let's make sure that that works for all of them. Three times two gets me six. Four times two gets me eight. So with this n, if we follow the same pattern, n times two, that gets us two n. So the function rule, I'm gonna abbreviate fr, function rule is to multiply two to every input. 
And remember we call our inputs x, so we could write our function rule as 2x. That means 2 times x. So then if we want to find the value of the 15th term, that's saying if we had an input of 15, remember x is input, plug that into your function rule to determine what would be the output. So if I did 2 times 15, because that's what we determined to be the function rule, I would get an output of 30. So the 15th term in the sequence, we could plug into our function rule to find its value of 30. So let's go back to page 591 and we'll try another one like this at the top. So number one, we wanna do the same thing, find the function rule. So look at your input and see what operations you'd have to do to get to your output. So I could either do add nine or I could do times four. We need to see which of these work for all of them. So for four, if I add nine, I do get to 13. If I times four, I don't get to 13. So times four is not gonna work. So let's make sure adding nine works for all of them. Five plus nine is 14. Six plus nine is 15. So n plus nine is just n plus nine. So our function rule is we're gonna add nine to any input. And remember, we could call our input values x. Number two, to go from two to 24, I could do times 12, or I could do plus 22. So let's see which works for all of them. Three times 12 is gonna get me 36, not adding 22, so that's not gonna work. Four times 12 gets me 48. Five times 12 gives me 60 n times 12 gives me 12 n. So our function rule is any input times 12. So 12 x is how you would write 12 times any input of x. So this is how you find the function rule of a function table. Now for both of these, they want us to find the value of the 12th term. So if our input was 12, Plug it into the function rule to find our output. So 12 plus 9 is 21. If we had x equals 12 here, plug it into this function rule, 12 times 12, we would get an output of 144. So the 12th term of the sequence for number 1 would be 21, and the 12th term of number 2 would have a value of 144.